All right, so again, we're moving into section 7.4, which is your double and half angle identities. These are located on your formula sheet. You will see at the very bottom, the left-hand side shows you the double angle identities and the right side all the way at the bottom shows you the half angle identities. So those are written as just theta divided by two. The plus and minus with the half angle identities, you're either gonna use plus or minus, not both. Okay, so we'll make sure we clarify that as well. And then again, homework, you're gonna do six questions on Delta Math, basically two of each type. Okay. So section 7.4. So again, just more formula-based stuff. And these, in my opinion, are much easier than the proving type of question. Again, these are very formula-based. The proving that you started your chapter with 7.1 and 7.2, that's really like the hardest part of that chapter. Questions on those, just don't hesitate to ask. All right, we're going to go to 7.4. So 7.4, double angle, half angles. I've got them on there. We're going to go, what are known as double and half angle identities. So double and half angle identities. So this is the last part we have not discussed off your formula sheet. And you're going to still need those exact values as well. So don't forget those you did a good job with that. So here's how these work. So number one, I want to go and give you that cosine of x is going to be equal to negative 7 eighths. I'm going to give you the ratio. And we're going to be in quadrant number two. I'm going to tell you quadrant placement is quadrant two. We're going to make your sketch in a moment. And what we are going to do is find four parts to this. So this is a big four point, uh, four part question. So we're gonna find sine of two X. We are going to find cos of two X. We are going to find tan of two X. And what angle, I'm sorry, which quadrant? And what quadrant? I'm going to abbreviate. Almost done writing. Angle 2x terminates in. Angle 2x terminates in. Okay. I'm going to scaffold this into two different parts, but again, very formula based. So, first thing I would like you to find was the sine of. Two x. I'm going to say that as part a. So we want to go sine of two x. I want you to go ahead and look at your formula sheet right now. Meaning you're going to look at the category that is entitled the double angle identity. And do you guys know that there's only one identity for sine two theta? Do you notice that cosine has three? We will get to how to decipher. Um, and choose which one to use in a second. And then tangent also just has one. So sine of 2x is equivalent to 2 sine x cos x. All right, so in order to plug into this formula, you have to have a ratio for sine, you have to have a ratio of cosine. Do you? What did I give you? Just cos. So you have to find sine. How do you do that? Quite easily, you're going to draw your triangle, go through what's missing, and fill in your appropriate trig ratio. So I told you you were in quadrant two. So I know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We've discussed this before. A hypotenuse is never negative. When you do Pythagorean theorem and square two numbers, it can't result in a negative. Now I need to solve for my missing leg. So go ahead, Pythagorean theorem, 
So what do we get from this? So what is seven squared plus B squared equals eight squared? Anything that results in a radical, you're gonna to wanna to leave as a radical. So I have 49 plus B squared equals to 64. So do we have B squared equals 15? So B is equal to square root of 15. Yep, this is enough to get ladies and right on your missing leg. And then you're gonna go back to the question and you're gonna fill in the appropriate trig ratio. Okay. So I'm gonna go two. I'm gonna always put it over one just so that everything here is fractional. And then I'm gonna plug in sine of x. So what is sine of x? Go back to your picture. Sine of x is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna replace that with square root of 15 over, yep. And the last one I need is cos of x. So cos of x is given to you right in the initial question. The other reason that this is negative is your ASPC. All right, you're going to multiply this. Obviously, this is a question that is held the exact value. No decimals are accepted. So I do 2 times negative 7, so I have negative 14 times the square root of 15, all over 64. And does this reduce? Yes, it does simplify. So you are required to take that next step. So this reduces down to, by by 2, and negative 7. Radical 15 and 64 divided by 2 is 32. So a lot of your answers today are going to be irrational and we're going to use this stuff to the right here. Okay. So we just found there that the sine of 2x was negative. So your sine value just came back as a negative. All right. Um, next here. All right, so letter B. What I wanted you to find the cosine of 2x next. The cosine of 2x. Now, if you take a peek at your formula sheet, you will see that there are three different identities for cos of 2x. Because we already have everything from part A, you are permitted to use any of the three formulas, whichever one is to your liking. Because we know everything here. So I don't know, I'm going to use one minus, I'm going to go two sine squared x. Again, it doesn't matter. Just pick the formula that you have things for, which if you've already found them, then you know you're good. So this is equal to one minus, and then I'm going to go two over one. And sine, I'm going to write that twice. So I am going to write this twice here. So sine was from above, we have opposite over hypotenuse. So this is going to give me the square root of 15 over 8. And then again, the square root of 15 over 8. Again, I'm sorry, but with the radical, you got to do some of this in your head. So we're going to go 1 minus 2. Your radical times itself just gets you what's underneath it. And then I have over the 64. And at this point, if you would like to type it, you certainly could. We'll go ahead and take that in the calculator and see if you can put math. So that is the answer that you are done here. I got 17 over 32. 17 over 32. How do we feel with that one, all right? So next, I am looking for tan of 2x. Tan of 2x is only going to have one formula that you can make use of. So right off the formula sheet on the bottom, you're going to go tangent of 2x is equal to, and I'm going to go 2 tan x divided by, and then I'm going to go 1 minus tan squared x. 
Remember when something is squared, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you write it twice. So on the top here, I do two multiplied by tan of x. I'm gonna go up to my triangle and grab that. So up to my initial triangle is opposite over adjacent. So this is going to be the square root of 15 over negative seven. All over one minus, and I have tan of x still, so again, opposite over adjacent. I'm just going to write it twice. So I have square root of 15 over the negative seven twice. And then again, and then we're going to do some calculation work in our head, and then we're going to do keep chain flip. Okay, so let's clean up the top part first. So the top would just be negative two radical 15 all over seven. Fortunately, you can't really reduce that yet. Bottom, all depends on what you're comfortable doing in your head. So this is gonna give me one minus 15, bless you, 49. If you do that in your head, one is equivalent to 49, 49. And then minus 15 49, which is going to give me 34 over 49. And then coming to the end, you just have to simplify. So I'm going to do keep, change, flip, see if anything simplifies. A lot of these are going to, but just needs a little bit of algebraic work if you have. So I have negative two radical 15 over seven. Gets multiplied by, flip it. So this is 49 over 34. And then I can most certainly divide these by seven. And I can also divide by two. So this is negative one on the top here, divided by two is 17. And then just copy this back as your answer. What am I left with here? So I have negative seven, square root of 15, all over, and then I'm continuing this here. So I have what, 17? All right. So 17 over 34. So just like that there. How do you feel with the answer? Pretty good? Yes, formula based stuff. Um, and lastly, I asked you for question B. This one doesn't really need too much work. I'm going to just squeeze this at the bottom. So I asked you where 2x was going to terminate. So what angle, I'm sorry, what quadrant 2x terminates in? So 2x terminates where? So initially, if you look up at your picture, you are in quadrant two. So quadrant two is from 90 all the way to 180. So if we are instead looking for 2x, 90 times two is 180. 180 times two is 360. And then the problem began with cosine. So we are looking for of those quadrants, where is cosine positive? So where was cosine positive here? So this would be either quadrant three or quadrant four, so our answer would be quadrant four. So that is just for AS. Okay, how do we deal with that? And then we all the way through. So that is your, again, what we call double angle identity. Now we're going to do your hat. So now you're going to draw your attention to bottom right hand corner of your formula sheet. And theta over two means the same thing as a hat. All right, so number two. These don't have multiple parts to them. All right, so say cosine of theta is equal to, I'm going to go three fourths. And I want you to tell me what is the positive. So, what is the positive? value of sine 
of one half theta. And then these are always going to be in simplest radical form. So in simplest radical form. I almost wish we had an abbreviation for that. So we're going to start here, and I gave you positive. I'm also going to tell you that this is quadrant one. So I'm going to start and I'm going to draw a picture just in case I need it. So adjacent hypotenuse. Again, it's up to you. If you always want to find the missing side, you can. Sometimes you just don't need it. So, but if you don't need it, it's there. I need to find the sign of one half theta. And it says positive value. So you're going to look at your formula sheet. And the sign of one half theta is equal to the positive square root. And it's going to say one minus cos of theta divided by two. What you want to be very cautious of is the two is included in the square root. Okay, so attention to detail is super important with that. Would you guys agree we don't really need to find the other leg of the triangle? Yeah, you don't have to because it's only going to make use of a cosine ratio and you already have that. So this is equal to the positive square root. And I'm going to go one minus three fourths all over two. So this is equal to the positive square root. Now, if you think about this in your head, so one is four over four minus three over four would be one over four all over two. And now think about it. Can you do feet thing split? So this would become a one over four times one over two, which is equal to one over eight. Good. I'm going to continue. And I get the positive, so square root of one is one. Square root of eight is irrational. You want to make sure you rationalize all of these answers. So I am going to take top and bottom by radical eight and then break it down from there. So radical eight over radical eight. So this is equal to radical eight over eight. And radical eight breaks into radical four and radical two over eight. You can do some of this in your head, but obviously that's not a problem. So I get two radical two over eight for a final answer of radical two divided by four. Again, just no resulting radicals in your denominator. Yes. So when you have a radical like this, it is equivalent to this. Huh? Good question. Yep. So it's always equivalent to that. And then obviously the square root of one was just one, just to simplify it. Yep. Um, good question. Anything else on that one, guys? Okay, let's do another half angle. This one I'm going to give you is slightly different. So I'm going to make you decipher which formula to use. I am on question three. Thank you. So a couple things that are a little bit different here. I want to tell you that the sine of x is equal to 0.7. And x is in quadrant two. Okay, so quadrant two. And what I want you to do is find the cosine. So we are going to find the cosine of, I want to go one half x. Again, you will have to decipher here whether to use the plus or the minus. 
you're going to set this up. So we have a triangle located in quadrant two. So here's quadrant two. Quadrant two contains angles greater than 90 and less than 180. I didn't ask you to find X, you were asked to find half of that. So X divided by two would be between which parameters here? Half of 90 is 45 and half of 180 is 90. Yep, so what quadrant does that place me in? Quadrant one. We're getting there. Then we're gonna go back to the picture. Here's how you do this. In quadrant one, is cosine positive or negative? Positive. So what version of the formula do you think you use? Positive, yep. So we are going to, so I'm gonna say cosine is positive there. I'm just writing you a couple little notes in case you want them after the fact. So formula uses positive. So that is how you find that in the instance it's not given to you. Because again, it's not gonna be both. All right, so let's go back up and figure out what we took from this. Now, I deliberately gave you a decimal. Trig, um, trig problems are usually written as ratios. So what do you think you should do with 0.7? How should you rewrite this? Exactly. Yep, so if you ever see that, do this instead. Opposite, hypotenuse. So 100 minus 49 would be square root of 51. It went to the left, so it's negative in the instance that you need it. Now I got everything. Now you're going to go to the formula and see if you can get this one. So we have the formula for cosine of one half x or x divided by two means the same thing. And this is equal to the positive and big square root. So this formula is going to say one plus cos of x. And then this is all over two. Okay, so this is equal to the positive square root. And I'm gonna go one. All right, what's the cosine of x value? We have it over on the left on our picture. So adjacent over hypotenuse would give me 51 over, yeah, that's 10. All right, so that's negative, so that's why we change that. Then we have over two here. Okay, again, I'm sorry, I'm not going to try to help you here. So we're going to do the one and the common denominator of 10 over 10. So I'm going to have the positive square root. And I'm going to go 10 over 10. So that would be 10 minus the square root of 51. All over 10, all over two. There's not really too much you're going to be able to do with this. I just want you to take it one more step. So if you were to do heat change with would you guys agree that two would flip to the bottom? Get multiplied by the 10. So my denominator is the same. So you may leave this answer as the positive square root. We don't usually work out um, in this capacity, but I just wanted to give you one with a decimal instead. So 10 minus the square root of 51, and then all over 20. Again, it's gonna be rare for you to see that. Okay, but we can leave it like that. I'm not gonna make you go any further with it. Okay, how are we feeling on those three so far? Okay, so I'm gonna give you one last question. This one is a TNT theta. So last but not least, a tan two theta. Just a practice. So number four, let's go that cosine of theta is equal to four over the square root of 22. In quadrant one, just make sure you pick up for those little hints. It says positive acute angle, that also means quadrant one. And then I want you to find tan of two theta. We're going to find tan of two theta. 
So again, your diagram, I have first quadrant adjacent, I have hypotenuse, 22 minus 16 is going to get me the square root of 6 is my remaining leg if I need it. Again, you can always wait or you can just immediately find it. I'm just going to go on. So we can use the tan of 2 theta. So the tan of 2 theta formula is equal to, I'm going to go 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. And sub in. We have two tan of theta is opposite over adjacent divided by one minus two of those guys. The so square root of six over four, square root of six over four. Anything you can do to make this easier, go for it. So I'm looking at this two and this four cancels reduce. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. The one in the front, can't I rewrite this as 16 16 minus 6 over 16, meaning that my denominator is really 10 over 16, reducing down to 5 eighths. Okay, so now let's put this mess back together. So I have on the top here radical 6 over 2, and then I'm going to flip this times. 8 over 5. I still have to reduce again. Thought we were good, but close. So divide by 2, divide by 2. You have 4 radical 6 all over 5. You're going to have some work to do with some of this rationalizing and simplification work at the very end. Okay. We feel okay with this part? And again, calculators not going to work on this. Okay. Questions are going to be in those four. Time is yours to get started on your notes and math ones. Again, they are just like these. I think they're in the same order. You can feel free to do your work on separate paper because you're definitely going to need some, some space to do that, you know, all your diagrams and formulas. And then tomorrow we move into solving. So we're going to do some linear trig equations into some quadratic trig equations, which is where your factoring is going to come back. Factoring and quadratic formula. Okay. So homework are your six delta math questions. I did allow for four attempts on all of those, just in case you mistyped something. But again, you're not graded for accuracy. You're just graded for completion.